looking at membership. And we are very pleased to have with us the Global Membership Chairperson for District 60B, Elaine Leroy Hines, who will be presenting to us this evening. We have as our presenter, Elaine Leroy Hines, Melvin Jones Fellow. Elaine Leroy, a charter member of the Lions Club of Barbados East, has served in the capacity of president on two occasions. Held other key positions and received many awards, accolades, and accomplishments over the past 33 years. The awards included the, the District Governor's Centennial Award, Melvin Jones Fellowship, Regional Chair of the District, Zone Chairperson, Paul Alcalades, and the International President's Appreciation 2017 to 2018. She also received awards for Activity Chair and the District, and the District Global Membership Coordinator 2019 to 2020. At the district level, she served as Sergeant at Arms to the first female district governor in Barbados, Elaine Joan Jordan, Melvin Jones Fellow, and that was during the year 2008. She has served as, as Associate Chair for Quest for Excellence, as a Zone Chairperson, as a Region Chairperson, as Activities Chairperson, and GMT Coordinator 2019 to 2020, and again as the GMT Coordinator for this Lannister year. year. She also serves as part of the Medical District 60 membership team. Len Leroy has been volunteering her services for, from as far back as 1970, when she was the recipient of the Manitoba Association of World Development Scholarship to Canada, after volunteering to partner with a school building project as a young teacher in St. Lucia. She's also a graduate, graduate of the LIGS program, a certified lens trainer, and has facilitated many workshops, attended several conventions and conferences throughout the district. She's a business consultant with a family business, and she holds a master's degree in business administration from the Bradford University in England. Len Leroy loves quotes and advises in the words of Abraham Lincoln, whatever you are, be, good, be a good one. Let's welcome Len Leroy Hines. Thank you kindly, past Council Chair Lane Sherwin, Progressive Melvin Jones Fellow, GLT Coordinator Lane Judy, MJF and team, distinguished Lions and Leos, special incoming officers, Leos, my fellow Lions, welcome to the GLT training workshop for membership chairpersons. I hope that you would benefit from the experience and best wishes to especially those who are tasked in this upcoming Lionistic year 2021-22. would wish for you to have a clear understanding of the role and responsibility of the membership chair and the committee the tenets of membership in a lion's environment and to develop and enhance the skills necessary to be an effective membership chair in your club and by extension, the district. Now membership is wide and varied comprising several tenets. But this evening, we would wish to cover areas specific to membership chair, preparing for your year, role and responsibilities, member recruitment, satisfaction, action plans and support. But first I want to say it's very important to know where you fall on the standard club structure and that you are a board member with a voice in the decision-making of especially membership issues. So rule number one, honor your commitment for in the words of Kenneth Blanchard, there's a difference between interests and commitment. When you are interested in doing something, you do it only when it's convenient. When you're committed, the operative word, 
to doing something, you accept no excuses, only results. So what do you expect a membership chair to do? Importance of the position. Why are you willing to accept the challenge or were you just thrown into position to fill a void? This often times happen, but however you were selected, your position is important to the health and vitality of the club and its ability to serve the community. You will be responsible for organizing membership growth efforts and to ensure that membership goals are being met, to support members, both current and new, to ensure that they have a meaningful, impactful and rewarding experience. And as a member of the Global Action Team, Club Structure Again, for your club, you will work together with the club's service chair and leadership chairperson. A role automatically fill by your club's vice president to develop and implement initiatives focused on leadership development, membership growth, and expanding humanitarian service. So before you start, understand your position and plan your year. Invest your time setting your goals and reap the benefits after. Form a membership committee and structure it to fit your club to ensure that there is enough help to get the work done. As the old saying goes, many hands make light work. So set your goals as you prepare. Setting goals and committing them to paper will help keep the committee focused and create a device for measuring success. Therefore, you need to become familiar with all the relative resources available at LCI. The committee can be made up of last year's membership chairperson, present incoming chair, and any club member interested in new member recruitment or membership satisfaction because both the previous and the future membership chairpersons are involved in the committee. It ensures that membership efforts flow smoothly from year to year, and the sitting chairperson can have an understanding of what has worked and what hasn't worked for the club. And having a committee will add a cohesiveness and depth to your membership, to the retention, to the leadership and extension efforts that will be far greater than if working alone. So prepare. Good preparation will lead to a productive year. Make use of your calendar. Slide six, plan out your months. This is just an example of activities for that, for, for the year. But for your development plan, you will need to one, establish a time frame for each step and set realistic, measurable and action plans and goals. Of course, these have to be approved by the board of directors. And not only paper goals that the year will finish and nothing gets done. Also set out who is responsible for implementing each step the criteria for measuring progress and success, and the resources and tools av available from your club, from your district, to support the goal. In addition, you can secure human, informational, and financial resources before taking action. While in the meantime, evaluating the success of previous goals with your current plan, making modifications as necessary to ensure steady progress is being made towards achieving as envisioned. And of course, to adjust if and when necessary. Now for the money talks before the 1st of July, work with your committee and the club treasurer to determine what funds your committee will need for the year. For example, membership growth event what funds will be required at each step. 
and continue to meet regularly. For so doing, you can take early corrective measures if issues arise. Mark your calendar with important dates, for example, Worldwide Induction Day, and start planning early so that the function is eventful and, of course, celebrate your success. I want to say here, make sure your prize possession should be a copy of the Constitution and Bylaws, a membership chairperson ebook, our guide, and then there are several other courses and webinars available that can assist your development and encourage members to do the research also. So what then is the role of the membership chair? The role and responsibilities as chair, your responsibilities fall into two main areas, recruitment and development. Your ability to properly meet these responsibilities will greatly enhance your club's membership recruitment and development activities. It requires skills like organizing, motivating, setting goals, communicating, planning, leading, building teams, promoting teamwork, and of course, thinking creatively. And especially in this crisis, being innovative. Wow, a mouthful. Some of these skills may come naturally to you. Some of these you may need to fully develop. However, building these skills will not only help you with your responsibilities as chair, but they will also help you personally and professionally. And reaching out to existing members is, is another primary responsibility, as well as hosting events for members further inspiring and raising awareness of the value of their membership. Retaining existing members and conducting surveys to learn about the needs, issues, and desires of members are also other responsibilities in this portfolio. Therefore, coordinate with club committees, hold quarterly membership committee meetings, Submit recruiting and club satisfaction reports to the board. And the big one, attending training sessions of the district. One never stops learning. Thanks to the GLT team for producing what I consider a memorable district 60B milestone. And then we look at actions for success. It is very important to remember that Lions and Leos are volunteers and their involvement is highly dependent upon personal motivation. Part of your responsibility as committee chair is keeping your committee members motivated. Remember that attitude is infectious. Therefore, motivate by being positive. And remember Charles Swindle, alter your atti altitude to gain, alter your attitude to gain altitude. Can also be motivated by assurance that the goal will benefit the community, the club, the district, and by extension LCI. By the belief that the goal is achievable and the project or activity will be successful by assignments that challenge members or use their expertise, by recognition of efforts and time spent working towards committee goals. But using these motivating factors can help maintain member commitment to Lions and encourage continued participation in club activities and teamwork. You can collaborate with a club service chairperson, as I mentioned earlier, to promote membership opportunities during your service projects. If you notice that I mentioned earlier the collaboration, so in fact, you as membership chair, you have a big job on your hands collaborating and working with. Participate 
in region, zone, and district meetings and events. You can contact prospective member leads promptly, especially those from LCI. There are some persons desirous of wanting to join a volunteer, volunteer group would write directly to LCI, who in turn would pass the information to the district, with most times the particular area where the Lions Club is located. I just want to share a classic example here. We had a lion, Lion Shernel Lane, who is the Lear advisor, Barbados East, for the last three years. We noticed that she lived in the area of the East Club, and so we decided to grab her first. It made real good sense anyway to place her in that area rather than in the area where she worked. And we're extremely happy. She has done an excellent job with the Leos of the East Club. She's like mother and children, and they ask and tell her everything. So now I want to look at take a look at priorities. Ensure members are provided with an effective new member orientation in collaboration with the club leadership development chairperson, who is the vice president. Club structure again, promptly induct during a meaningful ceremony. Follow up with sponsors to be sure new members are immediately involved in club activities. Plan conduct or assist with orientation, refresher courses for all Lions Club members. How many sponsors look out for their members? Or does the buck stops when you receive the pin from International? Or should I ask how many members are cared for by their sponsors? Or they don't care if you swim or die after induction? I'm saying here the sponsors have a lasting responsibility to the member. Promote the club at service events in public by working closely with the communications chair. Club structure again. And I now want to look at measuring success. Conduct at least one membership drive in the community than the previous year. Contact a minimum of two or more former members about returning to the club. I want to stress here once they resigned in good standing. Increase total membership over the previous fiscal year. Work closely with the secretary and members to monitor any challenges that may occur and try to reach, retain at least 100% of your members. Tough job. It is especially in this crisis time, but we can do it. And we know from experience that coming to the end of the year, clubs usually drop all the baggage they carry, not wanting to pay international for them for the coming year. But I want to say, hey, you have to remember kindness and remember that kindness matters. There's some clubs that have not, did not have drops in several years. But note that the board of directors should not drop any member until all efforts have been exhausted. Don't drop the lion and then he or she ain't got a clue until it comes out in the president's report. And if the lion ain't at the club and get the message sometimes not correct, if that person is not strong, you're sure to have a heart attack right there. So I'm saying be kind. Be kind. If you cannot be kind and show kindness to your own, how can you go into the communities and show kindness? So kindness matters. So what are volunteers looking for outside of service? Social, political, and economic conditions and COVID-19 affect the way people perceive volunteering in this time and what they hope to gain from the experience. So when developing recruiting strategies, ask yourself, what are volunteers looking for when they choose an organization? What volunteer options are available in my community? Is my club offering prospective members opportunities 
that match their expectations? How do the benefits of Lions Club membership compare with those of other organizations or volunteer opportunities? What can be done to help prospective members choose Lions over other organizations? These can be used effectively as a springboard for a discussion and to determine the best way to position your club as the preferred option for service in your community. Also focus on the benefits of Lions Club membership that extend beyond service, for example, the camaraderie, the fellowship and friendship with like-minded people in the community, opportunities for business networking, and to develop leadership skills within a well-established international service organization. Some businesses now require that you belong to some NGO when you're doing their application. So start, net, start the networking process in your club. There are lots of ideas to pursue for networking. For example, you can encourage members to build an interesting club program around their profession. A doctor could speak about the warning signs of type 2 diabetes. A landscape architect could give advice about choosing the right trees for your yard. Or a car dealer could share information about purchasing a used car. And the list goes on. Notice I kept stressing plan. For as the adage says, if you fail to plan, I say you plan to fail. Again, your membership plan. Membership satisfaction. Creating a membership plan is a way to document your club's vision, goals, and strategies for expanding and keeping your members connected. So be sure to involve all of your members in the creation and consider everyone's ideas. No idea is foolish. Having contributions from members will foster enthusiasm and help ensure your plan is well implemented because members feel ownership. Once it is created, your plan can serve as a guide to setting your membership goals and tracking your club's progress. Assist club officers in organizing a quality initiative to examine your community needs. Assess your current membership satisfaction. Improve current club membership by conducting a how are your ratings survey with your active members which I take it that clubs are already doing or have done. So this is not new. Neither is the District 60B forward focus. So make full use of these and make full use of the resources available to you. You can also conduct a former member survey to see what caused members to leave to assist you in your retention efforts. LCI has been working to build a repository of best practices and successful stories. So let them know what works to make your new members feel more welcome. Share your stories and to celebrate the long-standing members of your club. So just to look at recruitment, you totally understand different membership types affiliate, they are large, etc. Recruitment programs understand and promote their use and requirements of club, district, multiple district, and international membership award programs and use these to motivate your members. Maintain contact with the district membership chairperson to report status, to share ideas, to ask questions, or to seek advice. And encourage new members and experienced members to consider a mentoring lion relationship through the Lions Mentoring Program. And all of these things you can find on the Lions Club International Resource page.
Also ensure that members have a valid email address to help them receive useful communications from LCA. Started July 2017, new members received emails from LCA designed to educate, inspire, and encourage engagement with Lions activities. This was designed in part to increase retention within the membership. Promoting membership during service events is an excellent recruitment tool. And of course, not forgetting the new member checklist, which I'll have a look at now. New member checklist. Ask, have I given them responsibility that match what their goals were at the time of joining? Have I valued their input and respected their ideas? Have I made them feel like a member of the family? Do I encourage conflict or bad mouthing? For example, these young people want to take over and change everything, but we're accustomed to doing it this way. Or these old people, old in, in age and old in the club, feel them own the club. So I want to say, don't encourage the bad mouthing. Well, we need both old and young. Young persons bring a wealth of knowledge and expertise. Old in the club, as again I said, years and age bring the experience and history. And I want to share an example here, past district governor, Joan Jordan, MJF. We call her the walking lines encyclopedia or the history bank. And if she does not know, which is very seldom, she will make sure to find out promptly for you. And I'm sure the majority of persons in District 6, 60B can attest to that. So we need the old and we need the young, we need the experience. And there are clubs in District 60B who have aging members and the clubs are doing very well. To ensure your Lions Club remains healthy and vital, you need to consider the experience and expectations of belonging to the club. Bridge the gap. And I would wish for you to share ideas on how best this can be obtained later in the concerns and questions session. If your club members feel that their time is well spent at club functions and activities and have built friendships within the club, they will remain part of the club for a very long time. This is why it's important to keep members engaged by incorporating various member satisfaction programs. These programs should focus on club cooperation, member morale, and, 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 and enhance meetings to help get members involved. For in, existing members are very crucial to sustaining your club's membership and continuing the good works of your club. So position your club and you as chair, aim for the sky. Prepare to lead, prepare to succeed. Every good Lions Club has six basic characteristics. The more firmly these are embedded in the club's operating structure, the more success and growth the club enjoys, thereby becoming stronger. You see, members and the club are interwoven. A successful club has a major service and fundraising project or activity, a strong PR program, well-organized interesting meetings, a feeling of teamwork and cooperation, and a strong membership growth, development, and retention program. Once these are at work, your membership development program has a solid foundation for success because membership is everybody's business and your main goal as chair is membership. Membership. New members are vital for success. But as we are aware that while LCA is bent on growth and numbers, you would not want or wish to make six steps forward and 12 backwards. You would wish to retain, you would wish to be qualitative and quantitative at the same time. 
engaged and enthusiastic members. And while we are engaging in qualitative and quantitative at the same time, we have to keep an eye on the age profile to ensure longevity of the club and organization also. We can of course look at community leaders who have demonstrated a commitment to service through personal involvement in community affairs. Or you can look at those youthful ones currently working in professional, executive or managerial positions and the like. Clubs around the world approach membership in many different ways, mm -hmm. recognizing and acting on the unique needs, customs and changes in your community will enhance your ability to increase your membership. So building membership is and should be Lion's top internal priority. And every member can make a difference. When you have a strong membership base, your club is better able to serve. Not, for example, with just the four or six that go out all the time and serve. And at reporting time, you will hear, but I didn't know of that project. This is why there is a need for active, engaged and enthusiastic members and club leaders who can recognize opportunities for growth and act on them. I want to say when using the membership satisfaction survey to evaluate your club, consider using anonymous surveys to ensure candid feedback. We want lines to genuinely speak out. Do not wait till after and do the step meets or the WhatsApp messages and then complain. Be open to suggestions. Consider all perspectives. Be creative and make it fun. For working closely with your membership committee and your global action team, specifically the district global membership coordinators in your region, will allow you to receive the support and guidance you need to meet your responsibility. This brings me to the issue of evaluation with a diversity spin. Is your club diverse? The strongest and most effective clubs re reflect the demographics of the communities they serve. That is, they include a representative mix of men and women and different age groups, professions and ethnic groups. Lions Club that clubs that bring together diverse perspectives address the needs of their communities more creatively. Diverse clubs are also seen by their communities as credible and they draw upon a wider range of skills and greater volunteer resources, leadership prospects, and fundraising potential. So do the assessment, which will prompt you to consider these questions. What is the gender balance of your club? How many of your club members are under the age of 40? Is the ethnic makeup of your community represented in your club? Do your club leaders reflect your club's leaders reflect the diversity that one would expect based on its members. Are different perspectives welcome? In addition, is the membership balance across professions? Is your club sustainable? Why do members stay in the club and why do members leave? Is your club innovative and flexible? Does your community have a strong awareness of your club? How are you using digital communications to promote your club? How does your club appear to a non-member? Because without a strong club, membership dwindles and it's lost soonest. So look at the trends in your club by a graphical analysis. Just to share that April, 2021 District 60 memberships to that 1901 Lions. Of course, there are a lot more today with the injection of the worldwide induction day increase. But at the time of computation, computation females represented 
56%, males 44%. Ages 51 and over equal 12, 1225, representing 64.4% of the total populace. The age groups of 50 and under represented 35.6%, which was 676 members. That was the dominant trend in the four regions. But noting that younger members were unrepresented groups. This will, I will, well, I really will display the graphical analysis for re regions for information during the after, hey, question, John, after questions. Doing and concern session. So I share that to encourage you and recommend to conduct a full analysis of your club. It can be done in regions and zones also. I'm aware this is done for as for district governance audit requests, but after, do you work with it? Is it shared with your members or does it stay until next year's request? Just to mention that our first vice district governor has been very proactive in his quest to chart the district on a path of sustainable su success and longevity. He requested the analysis of the district at the time. I didn't ask permission to echo this statement, but as the old people will say, no name, no lock up. However, the trend has shifted somewhat with the inclusion of diversity in age and gender on worldwide induction there. Therefore, it would be prudent to conduct a final analysis at year end to show the true trends, which could be stored and used for data sometime in the future or for future reference. So have a look at the analysis of the age and gender diversity for worldwide induction being 10 percent 30 years and under 30 percent of ages 31 to 40 41 percent of ages 41 to 50 12 percent of ages 51 to 60 and five percent over 60. and therefore with that cadre of talented members the district of course would wish not to lose them by adding more. So your eyes must be pricked for the noticeable signs of trouble, if any, and work on them promptly. Signs of trouble. You must be aware of and investigate signs of trouble that may indicate a member's dissatisfaction and deal with the same immediately. For example, failure to pay dues and to attend meets perception of no sense of belonging, apathy of some club officers, lack of poor leadership, club management, no meaningful club projects and activities, lack of focus and direction, lack of a strong membership development and retention program, conflicts, disagreements, personality clashes, etc. And too many responsibilities, and the list can go on and go on. And we must remember the burnout. So how do you stimulate enthusiasm? Remember the services a club performs are worthwhile. Every day should be proud of these accomplishments and make use of all the publicity available. With a little personalized effort, you can ensure that your club is in good fit for both newly recruited members and members with many years of service. Keep the club informed and, and, and of course, wear your lines pin proudly. Do your club represent a good balance as professionals? Your club has any members who work in software engineering or web development? What about public relations or fund development? Don't forget about the entrepreneurs, owners of home-based businesses, younger professionals and community service leaders. For clubs that include members with varied professions, gain a cross-section of expertise. 
perspectives and skills that increase their capacity to serve the community as well. Get to know your members' unique skill sets and involve them in your club's committees and projects promptly. Members who have a role to play in the club are more engaged, but if not, how are we going to engage them? Recognize their achievements and celebrate occasions such as club membership milestones, work promotions and birthdays, babies, reach out to members with low attendance, understand to understand why they aren't coming to club and help them re-engage. What about the buddy system? Does it work? Get regular feedback from members to confirm that they are experiencing the benefits they were promised when they join. Encourage them to serve on committees that suit their skills and interests. Give members a clear sense of the club's long range goals and mission. And I hope that all the clubs in District 60B would have a mission, a mission statement and a vision. Get to know your members and value the relationships that are formed within their clubs. This is one of the primary reasons that people stay in lines. But please dissolve the bad cliques. Encourage members to learn about their fellow members. But when a member confides in you, do not betray that trust. Make an effort to understand your members' backgrounds and interests. Ask members which upcoming project or activity they are most looking forward to. Feature a, a different member in each of your newsletters. Involve families in meetings, social activities. Ask members to take turns sharing their lines moments at meetings. And very important, listen to your members and their concerns. Review the membership satisfaction survey results to be sure that you are actively seeking out their opinions and that their voices are being heard. And take prompt action to address the concerns of your members so that their experience in your club is positive. COVID-19. Let me say though that in this COVID environment, there's definitely a financial follow as persons have been put on the breadline. But we have to be kind and be our keepers of our brothers and sisters as I encourage all of you to continue to be creative and innovative at this juncture. None of us could have foreseen these extraordinary challenges brought on by COVID-19 pandemic caused by the coronavirus. The question, however, is how do we maintain membership engagement during this time? It has impacted on financial responsibility, engagement, membership strength and retention, costs, satisfaction, and service among others, as the move towards physical distancing has created a new normal. However, noticeable is the attendance at meets and other virtual functions has increased tremendously. Well, I'm sure that these challenges will bring out our considerable strength, ingenuity, decisiveness, flexibility, and integrity from each one of us as Leos and Lions. And now, as you feel your comments, questions, queries, Lion Wendy, as we promised earlier, will just for information show you the interim graphical analysis of District 60B by regions. Again, I will say, sure that a comprehensive document will be done at the end of the dynasty year to reveal the true year figures, which of course will be very different and distrib distributed or circulated through the district. We're looking at that region one with the gender analysis. And if you notice, I said earlier, 
about the males and the females. Male, female, female dominant. Next one, I read it. Region one, also the group analysis. And we're looking at, remember I said earlier, the 51 to 60 group was fairly dominant. So we need to attract um, younger persons. I remember when I was in the club, I was in my thirties. And so now I'm looking to retire. So we need to get the younger persons, not that we will this well not have the older ones, but we need the younger ones for you know to carry on the club longevity. Region two, same gender, the gender ratio, females dominating, group analysis. And the, the list goes on and goes on and goes on. As I said earlier, the, the gender, the females were a little bit more than the males and the, the age groups, 51 plus, would have been the, the trending factor. In, in, in region four, though, we had a group. Um, the gender for region four, I think the males were dominating a bit in region four. So as I said earlier that we will look at the district because we have had an injection of new members and we will look at the district with a different eye and slant and we will look at the doing the analysis uh, which would show a true picture of the district at the end of the linistic year. Thank you, Lai Wendy. And now, the appeal for action. Words may show a man's wit, but actions his meaning. That's Benjamin Franklin. And, and so, as I end this presentation, I wish to express gratitude to the GLT theme for the opportunity to share. Commend them again for the excellent work being done in the in sub district 60B, and to thank you, Lions and Leos, for work. attending. At this juncture, we will look at questions, concerns, and and you know anything that you want to raise. I remember earlier stating that I would want you to share, you know, ways that we can look at bridging the gap between the old and the young in the clubs. And Sherwin and Julie, any yes, questions Lyons. in the chat? Yes, Lance, I this is the opportunity now for you to ask our presenter. Any questions, if you have any concerns, so you can raise your hand and we will get to you. Or you can also um, put your questions in the chat. Are there any questions? No questions for the Leroy and membership, how we can grow you really want to pick her brain as to how we can increase our membership in the district in the coming year okay sherwin if there are no questions i want to say congratulations to all and best wishes as you aim to strengthen membership in your clubs district and by extension lca encourage you to practice all the necessary hygiene protocols and remember in prayer our leos and lions and people of st vincent and the grenadines and neighboring affected islands stay safe thank you Lion sharon thank you Lane leroy on on behalf of the district 60b global leadership team we want to present you with this virtual certificate of appreciation in recognition of your presentation on club membership to your person to the incoming officers school virtual edition. 
This will be mailed to you so you can have it for your records. Thank you kindly. I will now, you're welcome. I will now ask Elaine Stephanie Braffitt, the second vice president of Alliance Cover Barbados East, to move the vote of thanks. As Council Chairperson, Maya Sharon Greenwich, Progressive Marvin Jones Fellow, Global Leadership Team Coordinator, Lane Judy Kay, Melvin Jones Fellow, Global Membership Team Coordinator, Lane Leroy Hines, Melvin Jones Fellow, other distinguished Lions and Leos in the audience. Leos, fellow Lion, good evening. As we close this fifth session of the Incoming Officers Schools Virtual Edition, it is now my honor and privilege to show appreciation to all those who have contributed to its success. Let us thank Lion Hazel Salmon for invoking God's blessings over the students' proceedings. To JLT Assistant Coordinator Lion Sharon Greenwich, Progressive Marvin Jones Fellow, we are grateful for your warm welcome and introduction of this evening's presenter. Our fellow presentation to JMT Coordinator Lion Leroy Hines, Marvin Jones Fellow, for your highly informative presentation and advice which I am sure will prove useful to us all as we seek to increase our club's membership and improve our members' experience in the coming Leonistic year and beyond as we serve our respective communities. Lions and Leos, we must express sincere gratitude to the global leadership team chaired by Lion Judy Kane, Melvin Jones Fellow, for coordinating this incoming officer's school and the IT commission chaired by Lion Wendy Labari, Melvin Jones Fellow, for facilitating this evening's session. And finally, a special thank you to all you Lions and Leos for participating in this session. Please continue to enjoy your evening and I wish the remainder of the week be a productive one for you. Thank you, Lion Stephanie. And I want also to show our appreciation on behalf of the global leadership team to the 90 persons who would have logged on to this presentation this evening. 